Connections team here. So I just have a few announcements and then Jake will go ahead and come on up. But first, um, there's gonna be a QR code on the screen if you wouldn't mind pulling out your phone, scanning that. It'll take you to our website and you can hit uh, the menu and hit connect card. And if you could fill that out, whether you're new or have been coming for a while, it just really helps us connect with you. You can put if you're interested in serving, um, if you have any prayer requests, really anything. Um, we read those and pray over those each week. So if you could do that, that would be great. On that menu, you can also hit give, and that's where you can tithe online. Um, next, we have community groups here at Mission City, and it's just a time where we gather, we share a meal together, and just hang out in community together. We have three community groups. One meets tonight on Sundays, um, every other Sunday, and at 5 p.m. tonight, it's in Mission. If you want that address, let us know. We also have one on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. in the Lenexa area, and then another one on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. in the Prairie Village area. So if you want any info on that, any um, addresses, stop by the Connect table after. Jake will be around, I will be around, and we would be happy to help you. And then next, we have an Easter egg hunt. Who's excited? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, we have an Easter egg hunt on April 9th at 10 a.m. at Broadmoor Park, which is really close to here. Um, if you are interested in volunteering, we still need some volunteers, so you can put that on your Connect card or stop by the Connect table. Um, I know a few of you filled out connect cards that you're interested in serving. Um, our kids director, Katie, will reach out to you this week. Um, but it's gonna be very fun. We have donuts and games for both kids and adults. So even if you don't have kids, still come. Um, invite a friend, have your, fr your kids invite friends. Um, it's a great time just to hang out um, with the mission community. And then also Easter Sunday is April 17th. So just think about who you can be inviting um, to that Sunday service. Um, it's not about the numbers for us. We don't want a ton of people, I mean we do, but like it's not about the numbers. We really want people to know Jesus and we just believe that um, he can transform people's lives. So just be praying and thinking about um, who you can invite to that service. And then last two things, I have a few save the dates. One, we are having a men's event on May 6th. It's a Friday night at the Thomas's house, Joe and Megan's. You're just gonna do what dudes do, I guess, and eat and play yard games. So it'll be a good time. Um, mark that on your calendar. And then in July, the last weekend of July, we're having a women's retreat. So go ahead and mark that down too. Um, we will have more information on that as it gets closer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and invite Jacob and we are gonna continue our series in Acts. All right, thank you, Melissa. Uh, so like Melissa said, my name is Jake. Uh, my, I guess my official title, which is a little awkward, is Community Groups and Creative Director. I say it's awkward because that's just like, what does that mean? Uh, pretty much what that means is I help lead our discipleship groups and community groups here, and uh, we have a podcast for our church as well that I host. But um, I'm excited to share this message with you all. If, if this is your first time, uh, I'm not the lead pastor here, Russell Schultz. Uh, I think we maybe already mentioned this, but he's uh, in Brazil uh, leading a mission trip there, trying to find some connections or a group that's going to plant a church there that we can help support and uh, help the gospel to spread in the Amazon in Brazil. And so uh, you get me this morning, which... You'll see if that's, okay, you got a few whoops, so you can, you know, be encouraged, okay? Thank you. That's encouraging for me, too. Um, we're about to find out if that's a good encouragement or not. I'll be honest, this is a very questionable introduction. Just thought of it about 10 minutes ago, but thought it would be funny to share with y'all. So, um, just full transparency this morning. Uh, so, my wife and I, uh, Sarah, we have, uh, we found this out very early on dating, uh, but we have very different styles or very different uh, paces, if you will, of how we uh, consume food, how we eat. Uh, she is a, a slow nibbler, and I am like a stuff my face as fast as possible and like be done with the meal. Um, so I'm not saying that that's healthy, by the way. I'm not encouraging anybody to do that. It's just for some reason, my whole life, I've been eating as fast and as much as possible. Um, 
So the reason why I say all that uh, is because as I was thinking about the message today, and uh, we're going to get into Acts chapter 10, if you've got your Bible or uh, the Acts pamphlet or whatever, or booklet, whatever, you want to pull that out. Uh, Acts chapter 10 is our passage today. And what I was thinking about as I was like considering this message is just how a lot of what Acts chapter 10 is a lot of big bites. Um, so sometimes when we read scripture or there's a passage or chapter or whatever that we're going through, sometimes it feels like a little slow kind of leak or you get nibbles of what God's maybe trying to do or it's maybe even confusing. You got to go through slowly or something. Uh, Acts chapter 10 is some big bites of like huge ideas or concepts for our walk with Jesus and for really the history of the church and what's available to us now. And so I'm just preparing you that if you're a nibbler, you might get a little overwhelmed today. Uh, but I'm going to try to make it as simple and as easy for us to digest as possible. Uh, and I'm excited to just be able to share that with you all. Um, before we get into chapter 10, though, I think it's important that we try kind of do a quick recap of what's been going on so far. Uh, a couple things that I really appreciate about the book of Acts. One is that uh, it's a story. Like a lot, not... Now, most books in the Bible kind of have a story kind of flow to them, but the story of the church and the growth of the church after Jesus is going to die and then resurrect, and we'll see that kind of in the beginning of Acts, but then we get this story of how the church evolves from there, and it's really fascinating. Um, and then also with that, we get the gospel preached in like a very simple, uh, complete way over and over. So we get to see this, this cool story of how the, how the gospel spreads, but also get reminded of the gospel ourselves throughout the book of Acts, which is, which is great. Um, okay, so quick recap here. So we start with the local church early on. Uh, the first couple chapters, we'll see the church begin in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, Peter and the other disciples are going to have this moment at this celebration called Pentecost, this uh, holiday festival that's happening where uh, the Holy Spirit is going to come down and it's going to—they're going to speak in like multiple languages at once, or at least in languages that everyone understands from different dialects and different uh, areas of the surrounding villages. And it's like this crazy: How are you talking in my language? How can we all understand you? And it's really just just this outpouring of, look, this is what God wants to show all of us, his good news, that who Jesus said he was, was true, that he did come as the son of God to come and, and die for our sins, live a perfect life, and then he resurrected, giving us the opportunity to also follow that same narrative and going from death to life, which is amazing. Uh, but that's the story that they have come to preach, and that's the start of the church. Uh, then we see uh, a message that I got the opportunity to preach a few weeks ago about this community that gets developed and this amazing kind of connection that they have. That they're selling things and giving to the poor and all who have need. Um, they have this great connection with each other. And what that eventually leads to is that they're all kind of huddled up in Jerusalem and there's this really like connected church happening there. But, but Jesus' call to the disciples from the beginning was not just to huddle up in Jerusalem, but that the gospel will go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and the ends of the earth, right? And so persecution begins to happen. God allows for the church to be scattered, but it's not just scattered to scatter. It's scattered so that they have the opportunity for the gospel to advance throughout the surrounding regions, right? And so uh, in chapter 7 and in 8, we see that this is beginning to happen, that there are people preaching to uh, those in Judea and Samaria. And then Paul, or Saul at the time, is going to come on scene where he is going to start again, ramping up this persecution where he's attacking Christians, killing them, putting them to death, trying to end the message of Jesus. But uh, throughout history, what's been really interesting is that wherever we see persecution intensify, we also see the gospel spread that much faster, which is an incredible story as well. But we see Saul's uh, last week, we talked about um, this idea of, of Saul and his conversion and how he then is going to begin to spread the gospel as well. But today... Our story is Acts chapter 10, and Saul and Paul is not involved at all. But now we're here. We've caught up. Okay, great. So we've got the story. That's where we're at. If you want to open up, we're going to start in just the first five verses here, uh, and I'll read them. They'll also be on the screen for you. It says, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, which I'll just point out real quick. If you're curious, Caesarea is in uh, Samaria. It's a city in Samaria. So as we talk about that evolution of the gospel, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, we're, we are to the Samaria level. <laughs> and, and then uh, today we're to the ends of the earth, right? Uh, but 
So there's this guy in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, it's a group of soldiers, uh, a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people, uh, basically means that he just gave money to, to the poor, to the needy, uh, did good things in the community. Uh, and so he gives generously and prayed continually to God. And about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. And he stared at him in terror and said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers and your alms have been ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one, Simon, who is called Peter. So there's going to be this scene that gets set up where he's going to ask Peter, this disciple that followed Jesus all his life, had an eyewitness account to who Jesus was, to his life, to his death, and then also saw him after he resurrected. He's going to bring him in. Uh, and this is going to be a, a game-changing moment for the history of Christianity. We'll get to that. Uh, skipping down to verse 9, then we see the other side with Peter. So the next day, as they were on their journey, these are the people that are coming to get Peter that, uh, that Cornelius asked to go. Uh, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat. Quick side note, back to the food thing. Anybody get hungry while they're praying and just like, ah, should I keep praying? Should I go eat? <laughs> Anybody ever had that debate? I've been there. So Peter's <laughs> wondering. Uh, so he's, he's hungry. He's, while they're preparing it, he fell into a trance and saw the heavens opened and something like a great sheet descending down, let down by its four corners upon the earth. So we have this picture, this vision in his mind of the earth, and there's this, this sheet that's being uh, draped over it. And in it um, were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is uncommon, or that, sorry, that is common or unclean. Um, I'm going to pause right here for a second. So, one, if you are curious why Peter might say that it is uh, common or unclean, you can go check out Leviticus chapter 11. In Leviticus chapter 11, God lays out for the Israelites what is clean and what is unclean. Here's a short version of that. If it has a split hoof and chews the cud, whatever that means, uh, it is okay to eat. All right. If it does not have a split hoof, split hoof or does not chew the cud, it is unclean. And it has been, up to until this point, uh, for devout Israelites, it has been unclean to eat something like that. Now, there are a few of these animals that are inside of this sheet that is lay, like coming down on top of the earth in this vision. And so Peter, one, a lot of boldness to say no to God, <laughs> uh, to, to know that you are talking to the Lord as he acknowledges and say no, but also has this understanding from you know, as long as he's uh, it, like known the Jewish law, that these are things are not something for him to eat, even though the voice is telling him to do so. So that's why he says that. And uh, the voice replies to him in verse 15. It says, came to him a second, again a second time, what God has made clean, do not call common. And this happened three times, and the thing was taken up at once to heaven. Now, while Peter is considering this, the men of Cornelius are going to come in and try to meet with him and uh, we'll get to that in just a second, but I want to make a few observations here along the way. Uh, one, I think it's really fascinating that uh, the two times that we see God actually speak to the main characters in this story are either during their prayers or directly after. Uh, and I think, I'm not saying that this is the only time that God ever speaks to us or wants to speak to us, but I don't think it's a coincidence that while they're spending time with God or directly after they've spent time with God in prayer, that he then speaks directly to them. And that's a, kind of our first big chunk the, this morning is that when we spend time with God, it opens the door for him to speak to us. And again, I'm not saying that that's the only time we see uh, examples throughout scripture that God's just going to kind of, when he wants to speak, he speaks. But, but it certainly helps and opens the door when we're spending time with him. So if it's been a while for you, you feel like you didn't disconnect it or uh, haven't heard from God or something like that for a while, like spending time with him is a good way to open that door. Uh, that's an example that we see right off the bat here. Uh, I remember the first time when we were had a conversation. So uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, when Russell was about to launch Mission City or preparing to launch Mission City, uh, I was working under him. He was the, the director uh, for student ministry for uh, all three campuses of the church that launched us. Uh, I was the director of one campus, so I was working under him, and he approached me and let me know, like, hey, this is what I feel like God's 
doing in my life. And I feel like he's calling me to leave this church. And there wasn't really like a, uh, I think he might have jokingly said something about coming with him, but it wasn't like a, a, even an official offer or anything like that. It was just kind of like, hey, this is happening. Just want to let you know about it. Please don't be angry or, you know, this is just letting you know. And, uh, and at the time, I don't remember ever like, there wasn't like a, uh, you know, yes, I'm interested in going with that. It was kind of just a surprise and like I was a little sad. Like, okay, so I really enjoyed working for you or working with you or whatever, but, um, you know, I get it. Like, that's great for you. I'm happy for you that, that you feel led to that and you can go do that. But then once we got invited to a prayer meeting uh, that my wife and I attended and prayed for the church, and we met with some individuals who were praying as well for the church. It was in that meeting that God actually spoke to us and, and called us to come and help be a part of the church plan. So when I read this, and I see God speaking to them in their prayers or directly after, like, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. It's like, I, I personally, this is just my own like, witness to you. Like, I've seen that happen actually for me in my life, and that's what called, called my wife and I to come and help be a part of the plant team that launched Mission City. And so I know, like, this is this is true. This is what God uses sometimes to speak through us and to us. Um, we also see uh, that God reveals to Peter that no one is unclean that believes in him or that what he makes clean, it is not good to call common. I would also just make this argument. We're not going to actually see this word in our text today, but when you see something as common or unclean, the opposite of that, really what they're saying is the opposite is holy. That is unholy, that is apart from the things of God, but what is not uncommon or what is clean is holy, righteous, and welcome to God, right? And so basically what God says is welcome to him, nobody has the authority to say is unwelcome, right? And that's true for each one of us. And this is kind of our second big bite. So on top of when we spend time with God, he opens the door to speak to us, but we also now, no one, no one, no one ever, if you have put your faith in Jesus, could ever say that you are unholy, that you were separated from God, that you were unrighteous. God has called you holy. God has called you righteous because of your faith in him. And even like when I say no one else can, that means your own voice in your head shouldn't either. Right? Uh, because it's so easy for us sometimes to hear that voice of, oh, but look at all my mistakes. Oh, I'm in this sin and I've been following Jesus and I'm still haven't got it all right. I'm still struggling with this. And we kind of get this narrative sometimes of, well, maybe I'm just not as connected or maybe I'm not invited by God or maybe, I don't, I don't know, I, maybe that's just me. Um, but I have that voice sometimes and I have to remind myself, no, what God has called clean, what God has called holy, I have no authority to call unclean or unholy. And it's the same for all of us. So that's the second thing that we see kind of in this first chunk here. Uh, and this is kind of the big idea. And we'll, we'll put this point on the screen too if you want to write this down or whatever. This is kind of a summary for it. But Jesus made a way for all of us to be called clean. That's really the invitation here. Um, if you want to kind of think about that voice in your head. Or if you're in here and you're, you're kind of just figuring out, like, uh, I don't know if I'm a follower. I don't, want, I don't know if I want to follow Jesus. I don't know if I believe in God or any of these things. I'm just kind of exploring this. This is kind of what I would just uh, offer to you is that Jesus' life and what he did in his death uh, and living a perfect life and dying on the cross offered you the opportunity to be clean, to be seen as holy and righteous before God. Uh, so Jesus made a way for all of us to be clean. And so, uh, like I said, so this at this time, uh, Peter is going to be uh, called by these individuals to go. Uh, and then the final thing I'll say before we jump into the next section of our text is we'll see kind of a, a transition here. Uh, one, we see that there's a calling from God that he has given to Cornelius to send people to get Peter. And we see a calling from God to Peter to go. And it's really important that both of those are acted upon. Because what we're ultimately going to see is that Peter is going to go then and give the first uh, gospel presentation to non-Jewish uh, people that are going to have the opportunity to believe in and receive the Holy Spirit for the first time, which is pretty cool, right? Um, so that's a little spoiler alert. We'll get there. All right, let's jump down to verse 25. We'll see the, the transition here. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many persons gathered. And he said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. Remember, he's a, an Italian cohort. He's a, a Roman soldier, basically. Um, I lost my place. All right. 
for Jew to visit or associate with anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. What God calls holy, I have no authority to call unholy. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked then why you sent for me. Seems like a very reasonable question. And this is where Peter has the chance uh, to preach this message of Jesus. We'll skip down to verse 34. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. For as for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Let's skip down to verse 39. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear Verse 43, to him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness. I'm just going to read this uh, gospel presentation section one more time just as a reminder to us this morning of the good news of Jesus. It's never a bad thing. It's for the word that he sent to Israel preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to here, so that what God calls holy, no one can call unholy. What Jesus did made the opportunity for us to each be called clean. As Peter preaches this good news, um, and I think if we want to get to our next kind of big bite here, uh, in addition, uh, another layer of this, what God calls clean, let no man call unclean uh, section, we see that the good news of Jesus goes beyond anything that divides us good news of Jesus goes beyond anything that divides us. Um, I don't know how many of you all spend much time on uh, social media or seeing the news or uh, differing opinions of who God is or what Christianity stands for or anything, but my personal belief, and I think that this is very obvious in Scripture, especially in this passage, is that God is not a God that would say that any race or individual or gender or any of that is any better than any other opposite version or other version of that. That's probably the most complicated way I could have said that, but I think you get what I'm saying. Um, the point being that no individual, regardless of anything that's any characteristic about them, is any better than any other individual here on earth, because what God says is clean, is clean. Uh, let no man separate those. And so uh, I just want to encourage you, if there's any, uh, any voice or anything that you see out there that would say different, uh, it is it's not biblical, for one, uh, and it's, in my opinion, it's not of God, surely, um, if, if it's promoting any, any race or class or gender or any of that above another, uh, because um, the good news of Jesus goes beyond anything that would divide us. Everybody in agreement on that? <laughs> it's very quiet here. Uh, and yeah, that's a good opportunity. I don't really call for a response very often, but that's a good amen opportunity if anybody yeah. wants to. Uh, yeah. yeah, perfect. Okay. Um. <laughs> All right. So uh, I mentioned in the beginning, so God gives this call to Peter and Cornelius, and it's important that they act on that call. In this section, we see the execution of that, that Peter's willingness to go and preach the good news to the Gentiles. So there's a call, and then there's an execution of that. Um, finally, we're going to see here the response and how important this passage truly is for us. Uh, while Peter was staying, this is verse 44, while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. And, um, yeah, so they were hearing them and extolling, speaking in tongues and extolling God. So there's the response. So, so because of the faithfulness to, to execute the call, what we see is that now the Holy Spirit has actually become accessible to Gentiles, to non-Jewish people, which uh, in this room most of us probably fall under that category. And so this story is actually the beginning of the opportunity for us to then receive the Holy Spirit, receive the power of it, which is cool, <laughs> which is a good thing. Amen. Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, so anyway, uh, 
let's let's jump into kind of the last the last point here to have here, which I think is uh, is interesting as well. And this is uh, our final kind of big bite uh, before I just leave you with some final thoughts. Uh, although Cornelius believed in God, we see this from the that first chunk again. Although he believed in God, prayed regularly, and did good deeds, he did not receive the Holy Spirit until the message of Jesus was preached to him, uh, which is fascinating because my concern. Um, from, for a while, from my time in, in college and learning to uh, kind of be on a, a church staff or what that looks like or how to be a, a professional Christian, as Russell likes to joke, um, has been that our churches in America often are filled with people who believe in God, may do good deeds, may even pray, but they have not been filled with the Holy Spirit. And what we see here is that it's possible to have all of those boxes checked and yet not live in the power that God has given us through his spirit. And with, like, it requires a faith in Jesus and a, and a belief uh, and a following where he leads, right? And a response to the call that we've been given. And so uh, again, I wanna go back to this. Let nothing that God calls clean, let us call unclean. The message of Jesus is available to us to receive power in the Holy Spirit and no one can take that away from you but you've got to receive it. There's, there's a, a certainly some boxes that can be checked here that would leave us wanting more. Uh, and I would just encourage you to lean into that call and lean into that opportunity for Jesus in front of you. Okay, I'm going to uh, wrap up here. I'm going to invite the band to come on up um, and, and begin to kind of take their place. But some closing thoughts for us here. Um, and I, I kind of mentioned this before, but if you are someone in here who, who uh, would say, like, I, you know, I, I don't know that I've put my faith in Jesus. I don't know that I'm quite there yet. I, I'm just kind of exploring this church thing or God thing or whatever it may be. I'll just, again, the offer is open to you. There's, there's nothing that would separate you from the love of Christ if you put your faith in him. It's, it's available to you right now to do so. Um, and if you have questions about that, it's, it's really difficult to kind of, maybe if you have questions or you're not sure, I, I would just encourage you, like, Find someone, uh, find me or find Melissa or, or find somebody in, uh, you know, we'll have prayer available for you in a second. Come down and talk to us about that. I could lead you through just some uh, some canned words or something, and, and that happens a lot. And I'm not dogging any of that. I'm sorry, I'm probably, this is probably going to be weird. But, but basically what I'm saying is, like, we want to have a conversation with you and, and make sure that we're on the same page about what that means for you. And we want to pray with you and, and walk you through that. Uh, not to just leave you hanging or to, to just give you some words to say and then, and then say everything's all good, but we want to we engage with you in that. So if you're in that place, like we'd love to, to talk with you. And I know that's scary, but it'll be the best decision you've ever made. Uh, second thing, if you are a believer in here, uh, that message is still true for you today. I think it's important that we see in Acts the gospel preached over and over because we need to preach the gospel to ourselves over and over. We need a reminder over and over that what God called clean, we let no man, including ourselves, call unclean. We are holy and righteous in the eyes of God. Final thing, uh, if you've experienced this good news and received this, the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, it's because someone was obedient to share it with you, even back to Peter sharing it and uh, allowing Gentiles to receive it for the first time. That was the first step, and then you've been the, excuse me, the great, 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 great spiritual grandson or granddaughter of someone who took that message and had a call and executed on that call, and there was a response, and that cycle repeated itself over and over, and that's how you came to faith, and that's how someone came to you to share that good news. And so my question for all of you is a wrap up is is where are you being called and, and how is God going to use you to then execute that call and create a response in the lives of the people around you and, and a great place to start if you're like that's a little overwhelming uh, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go where did God meet Peter and Cornelius in the midst of the time that they were meeting with him or directly after to start with spending time with God pray that he would encourage you, give you a name, give you something that you could execute on, speak to you in some way, take that call, execute response. It could lead to generations of believers because of it, or an entire nation, an entire people group, an entire race, whatever it may be, but because you executed on the call that God gave you. I'm going to pray for us, and, uh, and, and after I do that, I'm just going to encourage you again. If you want prayer. We've got people that will be on both
both sides here. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to encourage God to speak to you. We'd love to listen with you, uh, walk through whatever it is that you've got going on or however God's working in you right now. Uh, if you need somebody to process that with, we're here for you. Uh, we also want to encourage you, if you'd like to take communion, uh, remember the death of Jesus, the, the broken body that he had in the cracker that's on top of the his blood was shed for you so that you might be called clean. That's available for you as well. We've got a couple more songs to sing, uh, and we're just going to respond to the message that God has given us this morning. So I'm going to pray, and then we'll just free you to do where you're led, go where you're led. Uh, God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the opportunity to preach this message. Thank you for uh, this audience. Thank you for everyone who's here today. I pray that you would have just be speaking to them right now. God, you would just be stirring something inside of them. It might not be this uh, <laughs> trance-like vision that Peter got. Um, maybe it is. That'd be really cool. Uh, but if you just want to lay a name or a, a thought or a, a, a passage or whatever it may be that you want to speak to each one of us, God, I just encourage you. I encourage everyone in here to have an open heart to be willing to receive whatever that is and then to have the boldness and courage to act upon it. Uh, God, it's how your gospel goes forward. It's how we spread it to the ends of the earth as we're called to. Mr. Jesus, we love you. It's your name I pray.
nothing else satisfies God than you. And I rest in your arms as you embrace me.
we praise you, God. I pray that as we prepare to leave, God, that our hearts can remember um, how you've embraced us today, God. Remember that embrace, God. Remember your voice as we live our weeks, God, that we know you're close. We know that we can hear from you, God. And give us the heart and the desire, God, just to pursue you as you pursue us, God. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. If you guys need anything, uh, any info on community groups or anything else, stop by the Connect table after service. Um, I know if you need prayer too, we'll stick around for a little bit longer. Uh, we hope you have a great week, and we will see you next week.